Finally, the more I rant about the debt, the more emails I get, like this one from Tammy in Florida who writes, Will you ever shut up about the damn debt clock? My God, you never give up. It's getting old. Give us something new. Tammy, how about this for new? Since last night when you wrote that email, we are now $4 billion more in debt. Then there is this from Max out in L.A. You act as if all this just happened and all this is Obama's fault. I never heard you say a word when your buddy Bush was bailing out the banks and starting this mess. Well, then you heard wrong, Max, on this show and on my Fox Business show, which, by the way, Max, if you don't get, you really should demand. But I repeatedly blasted those bailouts, arguing they were setting a bad and dangerous precedent, even when it got a very chilly response from my so-called Bush buddies at the White House and many others supporting what then-President Bush was doing. Government needs to ste step in with Treasury to make sure there's a floor under falling real estate uh, values, particularly residential. Why? Uh, and Why does the government values? need to do that? Why not because let the markets, frankly, however hellish it might be, and however if, hellish it might be tomorrow, if Jack, they, if the House if they, rejects this, let her rip. Mr. Free Market Capitalist, probably one of the best CEOs of the last century, are signing on to what is essentially a fiscal Hill Mary pass. No, I think it's another step in trying to resolve the crisis that we have. What if it continues? Well, we'll we're going to have to take some other steps. We're, we're obviously, we may have to step in more aggressively to stop the downward push on housing. But where does it end, uh, Jack? Where does it end? You know, my point then, as it is now, green. I'm not red, I'm not blue, I'm green. I'm your green, your money. Because for me, this isn't business, it's personal. I personally know what that can do. You see, a couple of decades ago, I got sick. I got very sick. I had cancer. And it looked like I was going to die. I know people hate this when anchors talk about themselves. There's a purpose to this. Now, to make things worse back then, I had bills. And I had insurance companies that disputed paying those bills. Now, we can get into another discussion about the flaws of the health care system and why I feel the president's fix hasn't fixed the flaws in that system, but not now. Back to this. Back to how I frantically was trying to pay those bills any way I could. I was tapping Visa credit lines, MasterCard lines. I was often paying one credit card off with another, always juggling, forever drowning. Here's how bad things got for me. It got to the point where just paying the minimum on those credit card bills and home equity loans was my single biggest expense, the biggest one. I used to tell my wife at the time, you know, if the chemo doesn't kill me, the lack of cash to pay for it will. Now, I don't know what scared me more back then, dying or dying in debt. Well, as you can see, on attention CNN, I didn't die. I beat that cancer. Unfortunately, I got another bad disease after that. But again, this isn't about me. Back to this. I remember that as if it were only yesterday. And you know what? I see it happening all over again in our country again today. We're sicker than I ever was times like a gazillion. We pay almost $240 billion a year just in interest on that $16 trillion debt. Think about that. That is our national finance charge, not a penny of it going to pay off the debt, just the interest on the debt. And that's with rates really low. Could you imagine if they go really high or just a little higher? I remember such a time. Do you? Do our politicians? I remember the panic of drowning in debt. But I also remember, like my financial pal Dave Ramsey, the freedom when I was no longer in debt, when I could breathe, when I could live. When money I used to give to Visa or MasterCard, I could give to myself or to my family for a vacation or for my long financially suffering wife. Imagine that happening to our country. Imagine actually having the money to strategically invest in this country. Imagine what we could do with that $240 billion we're just pissing away in interest payments each year in this country. A quarter of a trillion dollars in interest payments. Because with apologies to Joe Biden, you want to know the real chains and shackles in life? It's the debt you pile on, we pile on in life. The financial chains that prevent us from simply living our lives. Take it from someone who has been there. When you have no cash, you have no clout. When you are out of money, you are out of options because you can't strategically invest squat. And right now, that is all we've got. Squat. Nothing. Nada. Zippo. Republicans did it. Democrats did it. We have nothing to show for it. After all this spending, we are just spent. That's what happens when you owe. You have nowhere to go. But when you don't owe, there is nowhere you can't go. 
You see, that's why I'm so crazy about this and sound like a lunatic about this more than I do about loving Napoleons and bakery products than this. You see, I've lived this, and I want to make damn sure as a country and for our kids, for my kids, we end this once and for all. And now you know. That's a favorite broadcast used to say. Good day. Do you have any food reserves in your home right now? How long could you provide food for your family if the food supply was cut off? A month? A week? Three days? Wouldn't you feel better if you had the necessary reserves? Have you ever noticed that the more advanced we get, the less prepared we are? Many things that defined life only a hundred years ago are so convenient today that we don't really think about what would happen if that convenience were gone. Consider how we get our food. We just go down to the grocery store and grab a few things. But what if something happened that interrupted the food supply to the store? How long would it take for the shelves to be wiped out? What would you do? How long could you and your family survive? You know, for all the other important things in our lives, we have a variety of professionals, from mechanics to doctors, to help cover our bases. Why don't we also have a food professional? Food is our greatest dependency, yet most of us find ourselves unprepared for the uncertainties that lie ahead. Why take chances? Why not do something about it? You've already taken the first step. Keep moving forward with this tour and even show you how to get your food for free.